The Pentel P200 series mechanical pencils are great, but they are mass produced and they lack that satisfaction we get when we use a high quality product. What if we could use some parts from the pencil but add a touch of quality and personalization? Here I use a small lathe to make a new casing from a beautiful piece of flame maple. To my knowledge, nobody is certain on the underlying mechanism behind this spectacular figure, but if anybody has any insights, please let us know in the comments. I mount the blank in the lathe, but before turning I remove the square corners with a small thumb plane. It's only a little lathe, so if it's possible to bring the material closer to size before we start machining, there is less work for us to do later. For those of you who watch our other videos, you know we have larger machines, but I want to show this on equipment anyone could fit in a spare room. Let's cut off the dowel and mount it in a collet. You could drill the hole before cutting off, but my small lathe bed isn't quite long enough. Concentricity isn't critical here, and drill bits tend to wander when drilling holes this deep, but the pencil will still work just fine. The hole is 110mm deep, so we'll require a long series 6mm drill bit. For those of you who want to give this project a go, but don't own a lathe, this can all be done on a pillar drill for instance. Of course it will be more challenging to ensure the hole goes through the centre of the blank, but the easy solution here is to start with a larger blank. The blank can then be shaped with planes, files and sandpaper using the drill bit as an arbor and in effect turning the pillar drill into a vertical lathe. Once cut to length the pencil body is reversed in the collet and the 4mm hole in the other end can be drilled. Now the internal mechanism of the pencil can be checked for fit in the body. If all is good with the fit, the shape can now be roughed. I start with turning a taper, but it becomes quickly apparent that due to the long thin nature of the pencil, it would be quicker to sand the desired profile. Even with tailstock support, the middle of the pencil will have a tendency to flex during cutting. A 6mm diameter boss, 1mm long, is then turned on the end of the pencil to help locate the tip. Up to this point the pencil is gripped in the collet. Now using the drill bit as an arbor, the eraser end of the pencil is shaped and the remainder of the wood is smoothed with fine sandpaper ready to accept the finish. In this case I apply many coats of Danish oil, occasionally using wire wool to smooth the surface between coats. A coat of wax to finish makes it feel luxurious to hold. Now we are ready to swap the plastic casing with our wooden one. Note though that vintage P200 pencils cannot be dismantled so easily. The mechanism should slide easily inside the new casing and a small amount of wiggle room between the mechanism and casing is required for the pencil to operate smoothly. I open the top of the pencil out to 6.5mm to allow this. The clip can be fitted if desired. If using a clip though, perhaps a groove for it to sit in is a good idea. I don't use the clip, so my original intention was to not fit one, hence the lack of groove, but it seems to fit nicely anyway. The pencil is now much nicer to use. The fatter casing is more comfortable to hold than the original, although of course this is personal preference. If wood isn't your thing, try a different material. Here is the titanium version. On this one I also machine the tip from titanium, 
but just be aware of the small grommet that has to be extracted from the original tip. The grommet slides over the pencil lead and provides resistance to control the amount of lead dispensed with each click. Thank you for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, please like and subscribe.